Uh, we watched, uh, the, fuck, Wondering Witch, The Journey of Elena, episodes <laughs> one, four, That's and right. nine. <laughs> Listen, the, I can be- The I, fuck, I, <laughs> Wondering <yeah>. Witch. <laughs> I fuck up the title every time I say it, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's start off, what do you guys think I think of this show? Mm-hmm. Um... <laughs> I think I think you'd like it. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with I think you'd like it. I think you adore it. I think it's probably really high up there, maybe not top ten, but I think it's up there, like maybe eleven. Um uh, so Gigi, this is what I was talking about. So like if, uh, if, yeah, if you if, if you press me, I I would say maybe like top twenty. Interesting. Uh, I give oh. it oh like a uh, uh, six out of ten. It's like a little bit above average. Mm. I don't really yeah. love it. That sounds about right. It's uh, yeah, it's definitely not high up for me. I thought it was okay. It's here's, here's the thing. Here's uh-huh. the thing that I want to I want to draw like immediately draw a direct comparison. Kind of uh-huh. is that it's kind of like Violet Evergarden, but the reason Violet Evergarden is better than this Mm -hmm. is because Violet Evergarden has an actual point to Violet being in the scenes that she's in in the episodes that she's in. Yes. And it's not just, oh, she's stumbling in on this story. Like, the story has a point and it has a point personally for her. Whereas this, it's just like, oh, this girl's, now she's in this story, now she's in this story. And, like, it might come to an actual point, but I didn't feel any sort of through line at all. Yeah. So do you want to hear the funny thing? Uh, is mm-hmm. I 100% disagree, and I think one of the charming parts of the show is that she's just stumbling into these stories. I have to agree. Okay. Because okay. I, she is a traveling she's a traveling witch, and the whole point is she is going around our main character is going around writing things down for a journal, writing down things she she sees and observes in these different countries but they're not her stories you're seeing other people's stories through her and i actually like that part of it yeah mm-hmm. my 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 only thing with that is like that is good mm-hmm. but it's never going to be as good as if the stories mean something okay, yeah. to I the character as that. well like you if you're going with a story like this like okay uh there is no through line with all the stories they're not connected in any sort of way she's not even the connecting tissue between stories it is literally just this episode someone's writing a story and she's dropping in just to witness it or help in some way but it is their Mm -hmm. story it's like that is good that is fine but you're only going to get to a certain degree of you know goodness before it's like at its maximum possible level um and and after that, it's like, well, you're doing all you can with the story framework you've set up. Like, yeah. there's not really much you can do to develop this story because you've set it up that it's not about the story. It's about the individual stories of these other characters. And I who, guess my argument uh, with one-off. that would be that the the main story of Elena isn't really much of a story. It's more of a character story. It's more of her so the development of the story yeah. isn't isn't like here is her story. The development is her character development while witnessing these other stories. And yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, because the entire I think that they just do a great job at it, though. Well, I think they did a good job. I don't know. I love. I don't. <laughs> I love the first uh, three episodes of this anime a lot, and then I like episode four, and then after that, it was like, oh, this is just getting progressively worse, and yeah. There were only a couple things like, but uh, what were you saying, dear? Sorry, I was gonna say that I the entire first episode was literally just like, hey, she's writing a journal and experiencing the world, and that literally sets it for the entire show. So yes. I don't yeah. think it's an issue for how it's set up, and I know you might not enjoy that so much, Gam, but I think it's fine. In all honesty, I well, okay. I enjoy it, but I don't mm-hmm. enjoy it as, like, this is a, a good show with something to talk about or something that's going to stick with me. This is, like, this is like the anime equivalent, like, this style of story is, like, the anime equivalent of going and watching, like, a Transformers movie. It's, like, 
there's nothing really to this, and, like, it's good in a certain way, it's technically beautiful, it is, I would argue, overproduced in some areas, um, but it's, like, it's, it knows what it is, and it isn't trying to be anything really deep and profound, and, like, that's okay, but also it's, like, to me personally, that means it's not going to really be something I like that much or think about that much like i'm probably gonna forget this anime in a few weeks because it's I like think... that there's nothing that sticks to me in this it's just like there's an interest like if anything i might remember the individual stories right. and like th- things that happened in them but i'm not gonna remember what anime was that from it'll probably be like a few years down the line what was the anime with that giant godzilla and the, the amnesia uh, <laughs> i don't remember um yeah i but anyway <laughs> um I think they tried to get deep with it in the wrong ways, and I think that is how it failed. Um, I mm. loved, like I said, I loved, like, the first three episodes. Episode one's my favorite episode. I loved episode one. I was mm-hmm. like, okay, I like this, like, dynamic. I like the fact that, uh, you know, she was, like, her parents were basically like, she needs to be taught a lesson, because right now, like, she tries too hard, and she's too full of herself, and blah, 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 whatever. Um... I kind of, after watching, I do kind of wish I did episode three. Like I said, I was debating between three and four for a long time. Um, but I really like episode... So episode three is a... The first couple episodes are set up, like, first half is a story, second half is a story, right? So it's, like, two stories per episode. Yep. Uh, the, in the first episode, it's... Or the second episode, sorry. It's, like, a normal what you would expect. Here's a witch traveling, and it's, like, nothing really bad happens. It's just kind of, like... There's, like, some kind of little dilemma or whatever, and it's, like, exactly what you expect. And then episode two hits, and, like, the first story of it, uh, or, like, the second, yeah, episode two. The first, the first story of episode two is, like, um, Elena's, like, traveling, and she sees, like, a girl in a flower field, so she stops and she gets, like, a bouquet from her. And when she goes to the next town, somebody recognizes the bouquet, and he's, like, my sister who's, like, lost or whatever, like... There was something about it. Like, she tied a, a, a cloth around it or something. And he was like, oh, that's hers. <laughs> and you find out, basically, like, the flower field is, like, it's, like, these cursed flowers that, like, draw people to them so they can, like, essentially, it essentially, like, steals, like, their life from them or whatever, right? Yeah. And the the episode ends, like, they throw the fucking flowers into a thing to burn them, but because it gets in the air, it affects everybody in the town. And Elaine is just kind of, like, on her way. Like... And I, I, that's, that's the point where I was like, oh, okay. So this isn't like, it, it leaves stories open-ended so that you can kind of think about what happens after, but it's not Elena's story. She's witnessing this from the outside. I think that's really cool. I thought the idea of having a story like this where the main character is not like, I have to go save the day was like really refreshing. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. I I did enjoy the fact that she like did not (laughs) give a fuck. Honestly, like she was just along for the ride. Just like I am here to experience the world and anything else the fuck off sort of thing. Yeah. Like it was fun. And that's, that's the thing. Like, that was what made it so good, because the episodes weren't about, oh no, she's got this moral quandary, will she help this person mm-hmm. out, will she not, like, and, like, they use the story to grow her character. Yes. Like, no, yes. it's just the story's happening, and she's here to witness it, and maybe be part of it, but, like, they don't take, like, five minutes of an episode to be, like, show us her yeah. internal struggle of, like, They're... oh, but if I help this person, they'll kill this person, like, it's just, no, it's not about her at all. As, as someone who really hates, like, fate and, and shit like that, and being, like, the one chosen one, one sort of thing, like, her oh. not... Because th- th- this sort of shit probably would happen even without her there, sort of thing, right? Yes, like, it, it would. That's, it that's does why, not yeah. matter. So good. She's just the camera along for the ride, and she's growing as a person mm-hmm. e- experiencing the things she is. In the last episode she watched, she literally has, like, a breakdown because of it. And I think I think it's great. I mean, I can understand how it drags on, yeah. but we also only watched three episodes, so I get it. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's the thing to me, is, like, that breakdown, that sort of, like, decision she makes at the end of the final episode is, like, it, it ends up, like, not 
affecting the story really at all, and it's not really a growth moment for her. It's more just, now that she's witnessed this story that's happened, this is how she's exiting the story, and this is why she's exiting the story. Like, this is, like, because it's affected her so much. Yes. I can almost guarantee the very next episode, she is back to normal. And mm-hmm. and it's, like, there's no, like, oh, now we're seeing her get over what happened in the previous episode as she goes into this new story. It is 99%, I'm going to assume, she's just back to normal, and it's like, okay, we're, we're at a yeah. new story now. Yeah, I think part of the th- part of the issue with that is that um, each episode, there's, like, months in between. Like, they're not back-to-back. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, in the next because, episode, because... it is, but yeah. Because it is just a serialized, like, here is this, it is essentially a format where you can go, like, you don't need, you don't really need an overarching story writer to come in and be like, hey, uh, you need to write this in your story, you need to do this, because we're doing this with the character, and, like, this is the through line for this series, you need to include these plot elements Mm -hmm. in this character. It is literally just like, hey, do you want to write a story in this sort of vein? Here are the elements of the world, here's the framework of the character, this is your camera, write whatever you yeah. want. Yes. Like, obviously within limits, but the, the there is way more freedom to just get an, a, a fresh writer in to write an individual episode. You don't have to edit it much and take out bits to put in like story connectors and, right. and season mm-hmm. arcs There and are it is, things it is that do serialized. connect in the series. Yeah. There are moments that connect. There are moments. Um, my, I guess my but... thing is like if if they the more they depend on those things and like bring mm-hmm. those up, the worse the series is going to be because like yeah, it, it's trying to be more serialized, but it, if it's also trying to do series and arcs in a storyline in some way, it's going to be worse off in both because if you if you're like okay we're doing just serialized and it's like okay you can go really strong with that cool. But if you're like, okay, but we're also doing some serialized stuff, it's like, okay, now you're having to take away parts of episodes in order to uh, register with, like, your series arc that you're going with. So you weaken individual episodes, even just slightly, in order to to build up to a, a season episode. And it's like, if you try and do both at the same time, then it's very, very hard to make it very good. And I don't think this series is capable of doing yeah. that. I think, See, like, from the episodes we saw, it's purely uh-huh. serialized, and I'm like, if that's all this is, cool, that's good. If it's like, okay, the episode Spooky skipped, or, like, episodes in the future have, like, uh, suddenly, actually, this person from this story comes back, or, oh, well, you learnt this lesson from this story, and it's gonna come back in this, and it's like, okay, now you've weakened those individual stories, and you've tried to shove in a season arc in a serialized uh, story that hasn't actually been properly building to any sort of season arc, yeah. which means it like it's it's like okay, I'm I'm I, my weight limit is 50, 50 kilograms, so I'm gonna pick up this fi- this uh this this forty kilogram weight, and it's like, but also I could put this extra like twenty kilo weight. It's only a little bit over, but like I'll I'll have to shave a little bit off this weight, and then suddenly it all collapses because you can't handle it. Yeah, um, I get that. Um... That's my personal feeling about it. Yeah, I think the way they bring stuff back isn't necessarily the worst. Like, you do meet, like, uh, like I mentioned in one of the episodes, uh, she gives her backup hat to a girl who's also trying to become a witch, right? And she, like, helps her out a little bit, mm-hmm. whatever. That's a recurring character. And I think having recurring characters like that, like, you meet the the teacher again in a couple episodes. And I think I, okay, I, I get, think that stuff's I, fine, but they don't they don't do anything too hardcore to where they're going to be like, hey, do you remember this little yeah. detail from this little thing? Like, no, they never do that. It's just kind of like, see, my here's some things, and I think it's fine I, how I guess they do my, that. My, uh huh. I guess my my thing is is just like if like bring characters like that back is like the minimum the the maximum they can do yeah. And if they then go, okay, remember this girl that she gave a hat to? Now we have a story about her no and it's they never like the do season that. finale it's like that's a complete tanking of everything no they, but never, if it's just like, they never do oh that. yeah the teachers come back for it for an episode and like they're just talking or something and it's like okay that's the maximum you can do yeah. without tanking your entire no, that's series. what they do but, but anyway my thing i'm not here to def- i i'm not here to defend the show i'm actually not that big of a fan of the show i think the issue is later on which we'll talk about uh when we get to the episode but 
I think that when they focus on the wrong the things. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yep. yeah, let's go ahead. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, so now that we're 15 minutes in, mm-hmm. uh, we'll yeah. start describing what happens in the episode. Yeah. Um, so... Very quickly, we're going to just run through this, because, as per usual, there's more to actually interesting talk about what happens in regards to how the story develops rather than what actually happens in it. So, quick, quick catch-up. Uh, episode one. We open up on a child that loves to read about uh, third world uh, human rights violations because she likes reading about Nike. Um, <laughs> a great wizard called Nike. Uh, she wants to go to a Nike factory. Um and her mother and father are like, yeah, sure, when you grow up, sure, you can go to a Nike factory, whatever. Um, you can be a witch and fly to the Nike factory. Um, uh, we she wants cut to make to shoes. The kid being older. Yeah, she wants to make shoes. We cut to her being older now, and now she's an apprentice witch, and she aced her exam, and she's like, all the others were so weak. And her parents are like, uh-huh, um, good luck finding a witch to apprentice under. She's like, thanks, mom and dad. Uh, and so she goes out to apprentice under a, a witch to become a full witch, but no one wants her. Oh, no. Uh, and then she hears her parents talking about some stardust witch. She's like, maybe she'll have me. So she goes out to find the stardust witch, and then she finds her in a field dancing with butterflies. Um, she's like, maybe this Whee! isn't a good idea. She seems like an idiot. Uh, the stardust witch is like, no, no, I'll, you can apprentice under me. Do it. I'll be good. Um, and then it starts, and it's like, okay, um, it's essentially a month of, like, getting this girl, who's named Elena, to just do menial tasks, like cook food and pull weeds and really menial things, like massage, and, like, she's not clearly not learning any magic, um, and every time she just puts up with it, uh, she just puts up with it and is like, fine, whatever, like, you're the, you're the you're the teacher, like, I would like you to teach me magic, but if this is what you want me to do, fine, whatever, uh, I, I don't have a say in this. Um, and one day, when she's cooking stew for breakfast, or dinner, or whatever, I don't care, uh, the teacher's like, actually, I don't want stew, can you make something else? And the, Elena's like, uh, fine. And then the teacher's like, okay, now it's time for a task, uh, a test, because clearly you're on the brink of breaking. <laughs> um, and the teacher's like, okay, here's a test. And they're over a waterfall. And Elena's like, what a, what's the test? And she's like, I want you to fight me. And then they have a really cool looking fight. Um, where mm-hmm. they shoot magic at each other and go, pew, 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 pew. And zap, you hear, zap, And you hear the Stardust zap. Witch at some point go, ada, ada. Ada, Yeah, yeah. The Stardust Witch, important. of course, goes like, ada, ada. Ada, uh, ada. Which uh, is, ada, is, ada. Is, a, is a JoJo ada, reference. Ada. Um, Fuck how... you! I I so... will kill you. I will literally murder you. <laughs> it is in fact a JoJo reference. The game is right. I will. Oh, anyway. <laughs> so so anyway, uh, Elena loses obviously because she's an apprentice witch, and the teacher comes over and is like, "Wow, it seems like you're not so special after all. You're just average. You're not even that good." And then Elena obviously starts crying because she's still a child. It's like what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, you're being so mean to me. And the teacher's like, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to make you cry. And it's like, what? You just, what? <laughs> um, and then she's like, oh, yeah, your parents paid me uh, to to teach you about uh, saying no more. That's right. This anime is actually an ad- anime adaptation of Say No More. Um, <laughs> and she's like, you need to stick up for yourself and, like, not let... Like, not just do what everyone wants you to do. You've been coasting along on talent, but, like, you need to learn. And in order to learn, you need to learn how to fail as well. And, like, accept failure and accept that, like, hey, things aren't going to go your way. But also you need to learn to stand up for yourself and fight back when, like, some think someone suggests you do something and you don't particularly want to do it or it's not fair. Like, hey... Breakfast, making me food and everything. It's like, oh, okay, we have this entire... Uh, okay, whatever, I think it's a bit clunky, but, I mean, it serves the purpose that they wanted it to serve, so whatever, I'm fine with it. Um, anyway, uh, we go along, and uh, they they have a, a wonderful time together. We get a montage of them being like, hey, ha, magic, ha, ha, food. Uh, and then she finishes her training, and th- uh, the Stardust Witch is like, "Congrats, you're now a wizard, uh, uh, your witch. Sorry, um, here is your witch mark." Which, okay, really, really quick aside, 
uh, the witch mark that's like a badge that they all wear is like the Star of David, and it confused the fuck out of the three of us the entire time because it's like it 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 is completely out of place. We looked it up. There's yeah. it, it's purely just from an a, a place of ignorance of like no 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 we're using it in the past tense of what it used to be in like like ancient times with like actual like magicians and everything and it's like okay whatever that's not how this works but anyway that's all we're saying about it. Um, uh, and she's like, okay, now you're a witch. Uh, you're called the Ashen Witch. Uh, because Elena has, like, white, smoky type gray hair, I <laughs> yeah, guess. Yeah, she's like, why are know, you the sortest witch? Uh, she's like, because it sounds cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, because yeah. it sounds cool. Um, and she's like, okay, whatever. Um, and then she's like, bye bye, teacher. Goodbye. Uh, and then she's gone. And then, uh, she's like saying goodbye to her parents, being like, see your parents. I'll be a traveler. I'm going to experience the world now. And her parents are like, okay, um, goodbye. And her dad's crying. And her mom's like, wow, you know, you're, how are you going to be like when she gets married? And then her dad cries even more. And it's really cute. Cause like, it's panned over like photos of him and like the, the family with her, like the mother and the father with Elena, but like a lot of them are just the father and Elena, like showing, it's a really cute little subtle thing of like, Hey, the father has a really, really close relationship with her and he's going to miss her. Um, but anyway, she's off to the Nike factory. Wee! Wee! And that's the end of the episode. Woohoo! Okay, let's go fast. Um, so we see some silhouettes in part four, episode four, and it's a story about a princess who fell in love with a castle cook, and then also she's Pregante. Uh, but Yahoo answers is down, so she doesn't know how to Pregnant. deal with it. And then we see plush toys shoveling some coal, and we see the title of the episode, which I didn't catch. And we see Elena. El- Elena? Ele- El- 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 Elena? Elena. Elena. Elena flying over the city and it's burned Alora. and ruined and that's weird. And the Nike factory's really gone downhill. So uh, she can't make it to the next town though, so she better spend the night here. There's a castle that's still standing. Looks pretty good. It's uh, raining ash instead of snow. She walks in and there's like this weird magic barrier. Uh, and she burns the door down and gets inside. There's some paintings around. And one of the paintings is a real lady who's actually standing there. And he's like, hi, what's up? Here, have tea. And my name is Mira Rose, and I don't know what happened to the town. I have amnesia. But here's this letter that someone wrote me that says I'm a princess, and also go look out this window. And you see some flamethrowers, because it's night now. And she uses a, a magic binocular, and we see a giant demon named Javelier. Ja- ja- Javelier? Javelier. And yeah. Godzilla. Yes. It's looking like the last. She, it's looking for the last person alive to finish the job of killing everybody, but the castle is safe because of the barrier. Also, she needs to kill Javelier, and they're both witches, by the way. And she just kind of remembered she's a witch, so she needs to go fight him. And she's like, "Are you gonna help me?" And she's like, "Nah, bye." <laughs> and she's like, "All right, I'm gonna stay a night in the servant room." Night passes. Everything's okay. Elena wakes up. There's bread, and it's tasty, and they have breakfast. She's still not going to help with the fight, though, because she's like, the letter might be from someone untrustworthy. We don't know. And the princess is like, listen, I, for some reason, really trust it. And she's like, all right, fine. Meanwhile, Elena helps move a whole bunch of ash and dirt to make a giant hole using plush toys and stuff. And she's like, I'm the ashen witch. I can do it. And now it's nightfall when she finishes. So Elena's going to go cook so that the, so Marilino can go and Mar- 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 <laughs> <laughs> Did you just Mar- make up that name? <laughs> Did you just make it up? What happened there? Mirrors, <laughs> mirrors can go and do the fight. Elena's trying to figure out what's Mumbai going on five. though, and she actually winds up going to watch the fight instead because she has to. So the demon, demon is chasing uh, mirrors. She's doing a fight. They fly over the hole. It falls in, and she does an absolute fucking murder on it. There's fire. There's ice. There's swords. It gets its head chopped off. Lightning. It's a lot lightning. of stuff happening. There's, There's lightning. lightning. That's true. And then she's like, I just remembered who you are. Ha ha ha. And we see a flashback of someone being burned at the stake. And that's weird. She's like, you're my dad. And cuts its head off. And then 
we find out through the story of the silhouette things that apparently she told her father she was pregnant and he was like, okay, can't have that. Execute that cook, please. And also the child. And she was like, all right, well, I'm going to make your life a living fucking hell and turned him into a demon so that he would have to deal with the pain that she's dealing at all given times. And the barrier only lets mages in, which is why they were allowed to get in and out. And apparently, also, she wrote the letter to herself. Shocking! And then yeah. we see her, wow. like, cooking some bread and stuff. And Elena's just kind of, like, watching. Really makes you think. And she's just like, what is going on? And then we see Mira Rosa uh, eating at the table and talking to empty chairs because she's gone crazy and ruined her entire character arc. And Elena just leaves. <laughs> yeah, can we, can we real quick, like... I, yeah. I liked the story as, like, predictable as it was to a degree, because, like, the minute the letter comes out, it's, like, very obvious, okay, you wrote the letter, like, yeah. something is up with you, like, like there's clearly something up with this character and something up with it, like, nothing is as it seems, there's very clearly something mm -hmm. going on, and it's like, okay, we've gotten the twist, and it's like, okay, she's living, like, she's committed genocide essentially against mm -hmm. her own people um using her father as an act of rage um and it's like okay that's interesting now that she's got her memories back how do how how is she like what is she now like mm -hmm. how does she live with herself does she feel regret does she does she is she able to live with herself oh she's just crazy now yeah it's like come yeah. on that's that's like that's such a cop out it's yep. like Oh, she's just crazy. We don't get to see anything. We don't get to see any proper resolution to the story. What we get is we need to end this story now. Mm -hmm. And it's like, come on. Yeah, no. Yeah. The the cop yeah. out just made me really fucking upset. <laughs> it kind of soured the episode for me. Yeah, same. Um, like, you like, could, before then I was you like, could it's all right. cut it off at the point where it's the silhouettes or just have the silhouettes explain like that she did that and cut it off there and you don't need to see Elena leave or any of that. You don't need to see the breakfast scene. Yeah. You don't need to see her making bread. You could cut it there and it'd be fine. Here's the thing. There's three ways you could do it. You could do that and you're essentially doing nothing with a resolution where it's like you're kind of leaving it up to the audience to figure out how she deals with it and sort of opens up the episode to be discussed. Sort mm -hmm. of like, how do you think she deals with it? How do you think, like, what do you think she does next? Does she go somewhere else? Does she just live there until she dies? What does she do? Or you could go option two, which is what they did, which is, okay, we'll have a definitive ending, but we don't have time to actually have a proper resolution so we'll do the easiest resolution we can which is she's crazy now mm -hmm. and then there's a third option which is in my my opinion the best option which is you make the episode have a poignant message in some way and you make it a message about grief and about how we deal with grief and how grief can make us do horrible things if we don't leave it un like if we don't leave it checked like with mm. the the guise of grief she killed countless numbers of people it's like that is a false equivalence like like, like what her father did was horrible yes. absolutely despicable but that doesn't make what she did any better or any right. good or any righteous or any justified and it's like revenge you could have is not a, story a thing that has either is... Um, a good thing. Re yeah, revenge at the end of the day is thing. hollow. It doesn't. It's never justified. Mm -hmm. So it's like you could have Elena explain that to her in an obvious way, or be like, "Hey, how are you gonna? What are you going to do now? Like, how are you gonna live with yourself? Like, and like you could have Mira Rose be like, "You could stay here if you want. Like, I, you could. This is a wonderful castle. Like, we could live together and rebuild the city. Like, as if like Mira, uh, Mumbo Number Five is completely okay with it." She's, mm -hmm. like, completely uh, read it through her mind, and she is okay with what she's done and how it's resolved, and she's actually happy. Like, you could have it be like that, and then have your reality check, which is our way into the episode, which is Elena, then going, No, I, I would never want to stay here, and I hope no one ever comes by here ever again, because you're a monster. Mm -hmm. Like, you think the monster was the guy out there, 
you're the monster and yeah, have right. her leave. And then you show Mumbo number five either shrugging that off and <laughs> going, didn't. I don't care. Or you have her actually, like, have a split second of her going, oh, maybe she's right. And then you cut it. Because then you have an episode that has an impact. It has a story that means something. But if you end it on just, oh, she's crazy now, it kind of means the entire episode was useless and was just, here, we're going to throw some stuff in front of you and make you think for a little bit for mm-hmm. like five minutes for like a 20, 30 minute episode. And it, then move it, on it to kind the next of thing, feels. Which is why it's like. The ending itself feels like a teenager going, man, isn't this deep? Wow sort of thing mm-hmm. and and it's annoying K- kind of. and just it just literally yes. it's those last like minute of this episode is just like isn't it so deep don't she makes you think doesn't it and it's just like no fuck off yeah it's like oh man isn't it isn't it like crazy how like she remembered everything and like her way of dealing with what she's done and she's now crazy and just reliving everything as if nothing's happened and it's like dude dude that's not as deep as you think it yeah. is, and it also isn't as good as you think it I, is. It's a really yes. lazy cop-out ending. You know what I actually would probably have loved? If we had gone with the idea of, like, she's killing her dad, and she beheads him, and then she just, like, goes quiet, and we basically kind of leave her, like, kind of, like, 30-yard stare, or whatever it is, 60, 50... Uh, d- d- whatever yeah that kind well, of stare contemplating what she's done yeah and she's yeah. just like oh god oh fuck it, it to, to really sort of put forward to the audience that this is what revenge does to you you get your revenge and instead of expecting the euphoria that you want and have been craving instead you feel hollow and then it suddenly clicks with her i did all this for nothing and that's where you end it you end it on a, mm-hmm. a a stark message of grief and revenge and what it actually does to you. And that's it. And then it would be a really nice episode. A really nice episode, and then off next week, our little Elena is off, I don't know, battling Winnie the Pooh or something. Um, yes. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, but it's, it's like, that's my thing. It's like, you can do that, and that's where serialized stories really work. You have individual stories with messages and either your main character that we have going through it is your is just the camera and you experience the story or in a even better version they are the ones who reinforce the story because because they're an outsider to this story they have a galvanized set of morals and principles and they are the neutrality in this case yes they don't have the backstory of being involved in the story so they are able to go what you've done mumbo number five is fucking horrible like mm-hmm. you're you like what what you've done is terrible like you are a monster that is you and and we, it doesn't feel out of place because where we've seen exactly what uh, Elena has seen so it's like that's why our serialized stories really work and really shine mm-hmm. but this one didn't really want to go there which is why I'm like it's okay <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, one of my biggest issues with the series overall, and we'll really get into that with the next episode discussion, is how it how it thinks it's being clever with these twists, and then it's like like how it handles twists is really fucking annoying to me, and how it thinks the payoff for an episode is a twist, and like I said, in episode two, which we didn't watch, the twist is just kind of like oh, we have a protagonist who isn't the hero of the story. You know, we have a protagonist who's just kind of viewing this from the outside. But then they, they like, try too hard from that point on to make the twists, like, live up to that when the whole point, the reason why the twist in episode, the quote-unquote twist, I'm saying it, it's not really a twist, but the reason that's so cool to see like the reason because at the end of episode two you're like oh shit and they want that reaction more right they want you to be like oh shit it's very clear they want you to have an oh shit yes and the issue is they they're not good at writing that what they had before was 
better. Yeah, it's just kind of like okay. The, can the I? Thing, oh, sorry, can I? I? It's it's a it's a two. It's a real. I'm gonna mention it because I'm pretty sure I know what you're gonna mention, dear. It's a two part. Because it's a two-part thing. It's that, and also the things they use as twists, they mishandle those concepts horribly. They don't develop them, and they don't handle them with the respect that some of them need to be respected with. Like this one, it's brought up, oh, uh, the the princess uh, Im- got impregnated by a chef that she loved, and they wanted mm-hmm. to get married, so... Uh, the, the king, uh, burnt the chef at the stake. Oh, also, and killed the child. But anyway, um, and it's like, I'm sorry, what? You just offhandedly mentioned that the king forced an abortion on the princess. Like, Mm -hmm. just offhandedly. Yeah. And it's like, this is a concept that you cannot just offhandedly mention. And the next episode also deals with that in a different way, where it's like, you cannot just casually drop these things in and not give the audience like room to breathe with it and give it the respect and thought and actual actual thought in writing how this actually affects the story and how this actually works in the story but before i get to it did you want to add anything to you uh so we know i'm dumb and potato for brain right um, can I can I say that these kinds of twists are the ones that I don't get? <laughs> so I how, how so when you mean don't get? I didn't get them until y'all were like y'all were, y'all pretty much were like yeah no like that twist was so obvious and I was like yeah sure. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay, maybe maybe saying the twist is obvious isn't right but it's like the twist isn't satisfying like it's not satisfying to be like okay oh oh the the godzilla was actually the king all along it's like the the problem is you haven't set it up to be that satisfying because Mm -hmm. we know nothing about the king we know nothing about the king beforehand so it's like actually it was the king of the land the whole time and it's like okay how is that, like, obviously there's the, the implication, like, he's the one that destroyed everything, but it's like, he could have been a terrible king for all we know. He could yes. have been a tyrant, and, th- and like, this is just a reflection of his personality taken to an extreme. Like, he was, he was a dictator, and it's resulted in him turning into this Godzilla-like monster, destroying his town well, literally. they, they it's did like, exp- they actually explain what the demon thing does. Like, they explained that, uh, it basically takes him, like... That he's seeing through the demon's eyes, that he's aware that he is the oh, demon, yeah, but yeah. that he can't control I, himself. I mean, before he becomes the demon. I mean, before he becomes the demon. They like, yeah. like when they say like, "Oh, he's the demon," and like he, whether the king wants to eat the, the his uh, subjects or right. not, the monster will. And it's like, okay, but for the the twist to be satisfying, you need to I set see that what up you're before see, you okay. reveal it. I see what you're saying. I... Like. <sighs> I guess like you, my biggest but, thing, but also is you like... fall into a pr- you fall into a problem where it's like the where it's like you set that up and it becomes even more obvious what the twist is going to be. Where it's like, oh, welcome to Starland, where the king is the nicest king in the universe, and okay, it's like then I... you see this Godzilla like monster, and it's like, okay, it's a bit obvious. What's okay, going to be I'm the sorry, I legitimately one. thought it might have been her lover for a while, and the king may have turned him I into mean, a demon. Okay. No, 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 here's the thing. I thought it was her lover at first, too, because I was, like, out of the information we've been given, and I'll be honest, I completely forgot the storybook thing in the beginning about the princess being, uh, uh, the princess being impregnated. Uh, Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, is it her lover? Like, did, is this just a jealous lover sort of thing? Like, what are you going for here? Um, and then it was like, the king, and it's like, okay, that makes sense. It isn't satisfying, but it makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. that, that's when I, that's when I say, like, the twist is obvious. I don't mean it was obvious that it was the king from the get-go, but it was obvious that it was something related to her from the get-go. Where it's like, well, okay, yeah, there's a letter, and they say that it's, like, like, the, the thing out there is connected to the reason why she has amnesia, and why she's in this castle. And it's like, okay, so, obviously, someone 
very either very close to her or she herself wrote this letter because as they're describing it she's like I know I know it's uh, uh very evil because I can feel it I can feel the hatred in this letter like I can feel how they've written it it's like okay this uh, this <laughs> This person has not been established to be, like, a incredibly, incredibly empathic person, so it's like, it must just be her who's written it. And well, then it's yeah. like, okay, the, the Godzilla must be related to her in some sort of fashion, because it's connected, and it's like, okay, with the information we've been pre- presented, what could it be? And it's like, lover or father? And it's like, okay... Uh, what's the reason for the father? And it's like, okay, if that's the reason you're going for that, for Godzilla being her father, and she turned him into it, that's a that's a, a good reason that you could have a really satisfying ending o- with. Okay, them. okay, I, uh, I, because it's a, a story then about revenge. I guess my biggest thing is I'm just saying like it was fine for me. Like there are parts that bothered me, but like I feel like I'm at like a two, and you guys are at like a six on being annoyed by it, and I'm just like, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I <laughs> want to say I I like this episode, and I wouldn't say the the twist ruined it for me. Uh, I just no. think that this, I, I, I guess this episode to me was like the beginning of what made me not like the show. It's not that I didn't like this episode. It's the, what happened as a result of like this episode is kind of what yeah. made me not like it. Um, cause I feel like, yeah, I feel like, like if like, you look at this episode and then you look at the next episode we watch, you can definitely like connect a lot of lines where it's like, oh, yes. Okay. Like okay, let's just so, get into the next like, episode. I think before we before before we get into the next episode, I just want to like clarify. I it, the twist didn't ruin the episode for me, and it wasn't ruined for me. The thing that ruined the episode for me and retroactively made the twist boring was that was non- her... nonsensical. She's crazy now. Ending. It's like yes. okay, you've just retroactively made your twist boring. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, instead of having a satisfying ending and point to, like, instead of having a, a, an actual point to the king being Godzilla and actually running with it and going with the consequences of it, you've disregarded the consequences of it as just, she's crazy. And it's like, yes. you have just ruined it in a sense. It's like, it, instead of this yes. being a really good episode, it's now just... It's okay. It's fine. It's like I love the visuals of it. The story is decent, and it's like pretty, pretty, the pretty okay to good until down. you get to the yeah. end, and then it's like, yeah, whatever. Let's move to the next episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, <sighs> uh, we're gonna put a real quick content warning up for this one because we're gonna need to discuss some things in this. Um, uh, <laughs> there's gonna be discussion of abuse. Uh sexual abuse of a minor and uh, familial abuse in any sort of context. I say the content warning not because the episode is about it, but like the previous episode where they sort of drop in, like, hand wave away, like, Oh, by the way, also the king forced an abortion on the princess. They do that in this as well. And it's enough to be like, you guys really don't know what you're actually writing here. Um, and it really annoyed me. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, now we'll get to it. Uh, I'll try and put a timestamp to when we finish talking about it. If not, sorry, uh, we might, it might persist. We'll try and contain it to one uh, little section. But okay, so Elena is in some clock town. uh, A town with a clock and she's in the square sitting down and she's hungry and out of money. She's, uh, uh, suddenly a letter flies by her leg and it's like, hey, want to make real quick money? Uh, uh, lots of money in a real quick time span. I need need a witch to help me out. And she's like, okay, cool. She shows up and they're like, we're Uh, making NFTs. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we're making NFTs and she's like I need the money, fuck it um, and so uh, and so uh, Elena goes to this uh, witch's house, her name is Estelle uh, and she's like hey, uh, I need you to help me um, the, like this job Like, all you need to do is just accompany me somewhere 
and Elena's like, I don't, I don't, like, I don't really care, like, what's the pay? All she really cares about is the money, and Estelle's just like, wow, well, you care, you don't even really care about the job, you just care about the money, okay, whatever. That cuts out, like, again, if this was a worse anime, you would have, once Elena realizes what Estelle wants her to do, you have a moral quandary of, like, five to ten minutes of, do I want to do it? Should I do it? Is it right to do it? That's all cut out of this, which I like. Um... <laughs> just let's so, go. So it turns out the job is the job is Estelle uh, wants to go back in time ten years because her best friend when she was younger, her best friend's parents were murdered in a in a robbery, and then uh, her best friend was then moved to her uncle her uncle's house, and her uncle abused her, and she killed her uncle. She stabbed him and then killed him and became. I think it's like the second street killer or something and became a serial killer that uh, just went on to kill people constantly to the point where Estelle had to track her down and execute her to stop her killing other people. She wanted to try and rehabilitate her. She wanted to try and make her like repent and try and heal her, but she realized it was too late and she couldn't do anything and she was forced to execute her best friend. So she wants... Elena to uh, escort her back 10 years because she's spent, been spending time building up her magic in order to essentially build a time portal to go back. The th trade-off is, in order to use magic in this, there needs to be some sort of sacrifice or trade-off. Like, uh, for instance, Estella's using her blood and just her general magic in order to create enough magic as a pool in order to, cr to create this portal. But you can use anything. It could be, like, memories or such. It could be blood. It could be, like, another person's magic, etc., etc. Um, which led to Spooky and I sort of having a realization of, like, you could sacrifice your memories of pizza and then <laughs> use those memories to power something and then you'd get to experience pizza for the first time again mm -hmm. and then again just sacrifice those memories and it'd be, like, the best thing ever. Hell yeah. Um, but anyway... Um, <laughs> Uh, they get a ring uh, for Estelle and Elena. A ring that shares their magic, because Elena is completely drained of magic at this point, because she spent it all building this portal. Uh, and so, if they wear the ring, they can share magic, so Elena, uh, Estelle uses some of Elena's magic to fight back, because her plan is to go back ten years ago and stop the robbery from happening and punish the robber for essentially sending Estelle down this path. Uh, Yep. Estelle is the second witch we've met that their entire witch name is just based on their hair color. <laughs> Cause Estelle's a color? Yeah, well, no, they were the Lavender Witch. Because oh, they had great. lavender they had fucking, fucking hair. <laughs> oh. Oh, I didn't see her witch yeah, name. That's, right. that's, that's great. Yeah. I kind of love that. Um, anyway. Uh, but anyway, her, her, she, she goes back, Estelle's like, I want to go back to prevent uh, Selena, who's the best friend, from going down this path. Uh, so they go back in time, and then we have a very quick moment that makes the episode not fall apart, and it is an explanation of how their time travel works, and why they're doing it. So, as they're flying around looking for the robber, looking for the location, whatever, um, uh, Elena's like, wait, how does this work? Like, if we change things now, won't it, like, change us? Like, how do we go back? And Estelle's just like, listen... It's like this. We go back to the original point and stop the robber. It creates a new timeline where Selena is fine and everything's good. We won't be on that timeline because that's not how our time travel works. We'll be back in our timeline when we're zooped back to the present. But uh, it, another timeline will be created. And Elena's like, wait, so what? The, what's the point in us going back in time if we're not actually changing anything? Which is what I would have brought up if they didn't introduce the very next line, which is Estelle saying, listen, it's not going to change anything materially or in reality, but I need to do this for me. Like, I need to know that I've done as much as I can mm -hmm. to save her. I just want to know that there is a reality out there where she is okay and she is being able to live without becoming this horrible serial killer. And it's like, cool, that's all you need to do. You don't need to, like, that's all we need about the time travel, is you explain how the time travel works, and then you, because of the explanation revealing a major plot hole in the motivation of the story, you then plug that hole, and we're moving on. So, 
Uh, boy. Um, Estelle, as she's flying after this, then see spots Selena down below as a younger child, and it's like, oh man, uh, I'm I've completely broken down. Uh, <laughs> I've started hugging her. Estelle's like, oh, I love you. I've missed you. And Selena's like, who are you? Are you a pervert? Um, uh, and. Uh, Estelle's like, oh, sorry, I'm from the future. And Selena's like, ha, okay, and then runs away. Um, Estelle and Elena get their plan in action from here on out. So, um, I don't, did you, okay, I, I have to ask before I start explaining what happens. Am I correct in saying that you actually guessed the twist of this one as well, dear? Because I'm pretty sure you said it as well when I was okay, like, oh, so I wow, didn't, she doesn't realize. I didn't. Um, I, okay. I thought because the picture that they took of the quote-unquote murderer in the newspaper looked yep. like Estelle. I was like, oh, Estelle is the one that's just going to murder everybody. Okay, so you were thinking that Estelle had ulterior motives. Yeah. Because okay, I, thought, I thought when I was like, oh, she doesn't realize what's like what the actual who the actual killer is and what actually happened. I thought I heard you say, yeah, yeah, she doesn't realize that, like, she's the actual killer, but I realize yeah. now you meant Estelle. Um, so. Well, it was because, it was because oh, her uh, hair matched the, the, the picture of the killer in a hood. That's all. <laughs> I guess, yeah. So, Estelle, uh, goes to, uh, Selena's parents in the house and is like, hey, uh, I am Estelle's older half-sister. Um, you need to come with me right now, uh, because of explanation to do with Estelle. And they're like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, and so they leave, and Elena's like, cool, uh, that'll keep him out. All we need to do now is wait for Estelle to come back, and then wait for the robber, robber, the robber, and we can, uh, fight him, and then be done with this. And then as Elena's sitting there, she's like, wait a minute, her family, her parents were killed with, like, several stab marks, like, what, it doesn't seem right that a robbery would, like, someone who's robbing a house would, would do that. It seems more like someone who would stab them multiple times would do so out of a grudge. And then her ring lights up, representing that, um, uh, Sol uh Estelle is using her magic. And it's like, oh, Estelle must be fighting someone. Huh, I, I'll walk there, because I hope things, it's resolved by then. Um, and she gets to the location where Estelle is, and this is when the twist is... The first twist, anyway, is that Selena was actually the killer all along. Um, she murdered her parents, um, and then... So this is what the content warning is for. Um, she murders her parents because in a single off-handed sentence, um, she says it was because her father was molesting her and her mother was jealous. Mm -hmm. And so she killed them, and she realized she liked killing, so she just didn't ever stop. Um, and that was the is. whole thing that was just glanced to, over, and it was a lot... To put it lightly, mishandled, and yeah, uh, incredibly insensitive, and like the previous episode, it has this weird through line of, like, someone going through something incredibly traumatic and having something awful happen to them... And the story turns them into a crazy monster. Yep. Yes. And it's like, the fact you're doing this makes me feel like you don't understand what you're actually writing. Mm -hmm. Because two people in these stories that we've seen so far where have had horrific things happen to them, and as a result, they have gotten revenge and become crazy, murderous psychopaths as a result mm -hmm. and it's like maybe that's not a smart idea to make these characters that um but uh estelle is on the ground obviously betrayed and stabbed by selena and um uh, elena's like oh god like you were the killer all along etc and selena goes like i just like killing like i'm not gonna stop i just love it so much here i go killing again <laughs> and rushes towards elena but then estelle gets up and and throws barrels at selena and knocks her against the wall and selena has a almost decent sort of scene of her uh 
realizing that Selena has been manipulating her and lying to her her entire life. Like, she wasn't actually best friends with Selena. She, Selena was just using her and was just keeping her around because why not? Um, and, and this entire time, Estelle has been feeling guilt and incredible upset over Selena's death and fall into this psychopathic murder when it's been revealed actually she was just like that all along and it wasn't her uncle that caused her to do that because they're implying that Selena actually enjoyed what her father did to her yeah um because of like the the way Estelle talks about it and also the fact that Selena was like and my mother was jealous like, jealous that her father was spending more time being sexual with Selena than her own, you know, wife. Well, she so said it's that like, the mom this is inc- beat her out of jealousy. I don't think it implied she enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, I don't think the mum enjoyed it, but I, I think it's... No, like, I'm saying, I don't think was... it implied that... Because you said that it implied Selena enjoyed it, right? Or did I misunderstand? In a, in a sense, yeah. But if if this if they're saying if they if they're going purely with just um just that like it, it's because of the way Selena said it is like it's half the things she's saying is like in a in a ha 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 I'm crazy sort of right. like voice, but also it's like she's telling things that she's telling straight, but also mm-hmm. in a way where it's like she's telling it in a humorous way where it's like her version of telling it straight is actually how she's acting right now. So it's like, oh, it's because this happened to me and then my mum beat me because she was jealous. And it's like, you don't... It it sort of gives a sense of like, either Selena is actually kind of lying about some aspects of it, or she's telling the truth and she kind of relishes it in a way. Yeah. Because she's a crazy psychopath. I think that they just uh... tried... I think the point of that was more like, oh, ha ha, my life sucked really fucking bad, and they were just trying too hard to make it edgy. I don't think she actually can, like, <sighs> ju- because it's like a it's like a thing in stories yeah. like that where the mom will blame the child instead of the, pa- of the significant other. So I think that's what she meant by it. Like, that happened. Like, the mom was like, oh... Y- it's like, I don't know, it's like a common thing you see in 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 stories like this, where they'll be like, your father did this to you because you seduced him, you're, you know what I mean, whatever. Yeah, it's your I'm, fault. Yeah, and and, yeah. And, and, and and sort of my thing is like, that's, that's what she says, and it's like, I think there's truth to it, where it's like, that's what the writers have gone with, where it's like, that's why the mother had to die as well, because the mother beat up the child, because mm-hmm. she was jealous in a way. But it's like, to me, when I hear that, it's like, especially coming from the way Selena said it, it's like, the mother was jealous, but also the the way that Selena said it sort of implies that she was, like, prideful in the fact that the mother was jealous. Like, I'm, I, like, my I mom think is that's so a lot of reading argue. through the lines. Yeah, I would argue, honestly, and this is going to be... Straight. I I would argue that that would be the case if this was something that was written better, <laughs> and not better in the sense of the like problem is better, like <laughs> you know what I mean, like good, but better as in like the sense of I don't think the story is written Slightly well enough better. to. I don't think this story is and, written and, in depth enough to be able to pull something like that off. I think it was literally just LOL. She's out of her mind. Look at her. Haha. Ha, edgy. She's crazy. And that was like about mm-hmm. it. Like I don't think there was anything else to it. Yeah. And. And and the thing the thing to me is like that's where it just completely it, it, it's already completely fallen apart. But it's like digging through the debris of this episode to figure out specifically yes. like how like this is not salvageable in any sort of sense. Like there is a way you could have written this story, but it involves a complete rewrite of the story. Mm-hmm. Um, like it, it, first of all, it would probably take two stories to tell it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's like, you have another character that has gone through intense trauma and grief be 
devolved yes. into a villainous character, and it's like the the questions arise from that. Uh, the first one being, what are the writers trying to tell us about this? Mm-hmm. And the second question, which kind of prefaces the first question, is, did they actually mean to tell us this? And it's like, in this one, they're telling us, okay, Selena, either Selena was just always a murderer, or her parent, her father molesting her and her mother beating her up because of it is what caused her to be a murderer, in which case that is a really terrible thing to say. Yeah. And also you then have a magical fight with said character where it's like you've just created a incredibly sympathetic villain because you've given them intense trauma at, that has manifested in a certain way and you've essentially just gone, okay, this character now needs to die, and it's justified in killing them. And it's like, they are a monster. I mean, look at them. Look at what they've done. And the problem is you need to, like, in a in a sort of real-world capacity, it's like, yes, what they've done is terrible, and they need to atone for that. But to blame them fully for it is incredibly misguided. Yeah. And incredibly terrible and really horrific to do. Mm-hmm. So, what happens in the story is they have uh, Estelle have this sort of emotional, like, you were a monster all along, uh, I'm going to kill you. And, and Elena's like, no, we can't kill her. Now she's like, th- it isn't her fault. Like, she, we, like, don't do this. Like, we need to. Like, there is a better way of doing this rather than killing her. So Elena takes off the ring, so Estelle can't use her magic anymore, meaning she won't be able to kill Selena. But she takes off the ring, and Estelle has pulled out the photo of her and Selena, and it's revealed that she's now using her memories of Selena in order to kill Selena. She's like, I don't care if I don't remember you anymore, you deserve to die for this. And we get the scene of the clock striking 12... The head of Selena popping off in with a permanent disfigured Joker grin on her face uh, because she's gone just completely mad with bloodlust. And then we cut back to the future. Um, Estelle is really in a bad place, but I think she'll recover because she seems to be talking in murmurs. I mean, she doesn't remember Elena... Selena at all anymore. El- Elena doesn't <laughs> yeah. remember Selena mm-hmm. anymore, and Elena's just like, I've got to get out of here. She writes a letter and just leaves and drops the money on the ground, like knocks the table over with the money. She doesn't even grab the money. She just leaves because the story has impacted her so much. And that's where the episode ends. Yeah, she and has like a breakdown. Like... Whoa. Does Alina um... not die? No, oh no, Estelle doesn't die. Estelle. I don't think Estelle dies because she sits around no. the stool. And she's, she's literally like, like bleeding out. No, I don't think. It's, I actually, I guess you could I argue. I, I guess you could argue that it leaves it kind thing. of up in the air. You don't actually get a shot of Estelle after they come back. You just yes, have you Estelle do. Being like, no, 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 you wait, do. She's you do, in do, the do, chair, she's bleeding out. Yeah. Oh. Well, I don't think. I don't know if she's actually bleeding. That's the thing. It's not. She's literally soaked in blood because she was stabbed. She, it, that's the thing, though, is you don't know if she's sitting there dying out or if she's. Like, the wounds have have, uh, closed, and she's laying there with all this blood on her, and she's like, she'll recover, but in the moment she's still near death, and it's like she's asking these questions, like, who's this person in, like, the equivalent of, like, someone who's woken up after a car crash in hospital, like, they're dazed, and they they don't know what's going on, (laughs) and they're asking sort of questions. It's like, you don't know if that's the truth? Or if she's just dead in a chair after this conversation, the problem is the story is terribly written. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I think not knowing it, if she lives or not is a big. I don't think knowing if she lives or not That's is a big deal. But everything that it's not a big that, deal. Yeah. But they 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 put it in a way where it's like it's kind of like you're meant to know whether she's alive or dead, mm. and it's like 
you haven't done a good job of telling us which it is, though. And it's like, is that important, though? And it's like, I don't think it is, but your mind is thinking about it because it's the only thing in the finale that was kind of left unanswered. And so it's like, is she alive? Is she dead? I don't know. See, I just kind of, when I watched it the first time, I didn't even question, I just kind of was like, okay, she's alive. Like, I didn't even think, I, I didn't have a second thought about it. Although... Well, I'll talk about how I was after this episode in a second. I want to talk about this, uh, but go ahead. But yeah, so, real quick, um, do you, either of you want to discuss any more of the things that we had a content warning for, or do you want me to bring people back I'm now? good. Um, Let's, I I'm think good. <laughs> that, I think that what, I, what I'm going to say, I can say without bringing it up, so. If okay, I refer so to it, I'll, I'll just say, back. yeah, I'll just say, like, the things we talked about in the content warning. Like, I won't say anything yeah, specifically. Yeah, just, just allude to yes. it, but don't yes. actually talk about it. Yes. So, okay, so everyone, welcome back. Hi. Sorry about that. Everyone who was listening along also, sorry about that. Um, okay, Just so, everyone in general, final... sorry about that. Yeah, sorry about so, that. So, anyway, um, final, final thoughts. What were you saying, Spooky? I just wanted to say my overall... When I watched the series, and I just want to talk about, I guess, episode nine in particular, uh, because I watched ep- I watched episode nine, and I literally dropped my score instantly. Because <laughs> when I started the show and I watched the first episode, yeah. I was like, okay, hell yeah, this is cool. And then I watched the next couple, and I was like, hey, this is going to be like an eight, maybe a nine. And then like I watched more, and I was like, eh, okay, maybe like... Maybe like a seven or an eight. And then I watched nine and I was like, fuck this shit. This is a fucking like six. And it falls into, it falls into the issue that I have with a lot of shows, which is it confuses edgy with like meaningful, right? Mm-hmm. It, it, it takes yes, this dark. That is its big problem. Yeah. It takes this dark edgy thing and it's like, haha, look, this is deep, right? And it's like, no, I am, I am five you. and this is deep. Yeah. And it's like, as. Exactly. And I am someone who, I like tragedy, I like, I like dark themes, I like dark shit in my series. And I think there's a good way to write that, right? This is not it. This is not it at all. And when I was watching episode 9, I was like, already, man, that ending. Because I was already not super into the episode. And then, uh, the part where she talks about the things we mentioned in the content warning, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, this is the route we're going. And whenever she, like, turns with her fucking Joker smile, Mm -hmm. and then after the fight with her and Estelle, I, like, literally, when she turned with her stupid Joker smile, I rolled my eyes, and then there was the fight with her and Estelle, and if you could have seen how fucking, like, numb I was by the end, like, how much I didn't care, like, you're sitting there discussing, like, at the end, is Estelle alive or not? I literally had checked out so hard that I was like, I don't give a fucking shit. (laughs) Like, I was so angry about the episode. I was like, this is the most, like, I I was so mad because it was a a thing that I thought I was going to enjoy with a a main character that I liked, with a side characters that I liked that had kind of an interesting little thing going for it. And then it was like, hee hee ha ha, what if, like, it's real fucking shitty edgy, though? And then I was like, okay, fuck this, I'm done. Like, it handled it so poorly. It was, like, unfucking real It was edgy for the sake of being edgy, and that's, like, basically all they had go. Like, that's what they did, you know? It, it was just, here's, character went through shit, haha, they crazy, haha, they kill. And it's, like, okay. Mm-hmm. You know? It's, like, it's, like, on the same level as, like, fu- like another. You know what I mean? Where it's just, like, here's a bunch of fucking shit happening, yeah. haha, it's real edgy, right? It's the cool. Prob- the main problem being that this anime has such a beautiful production to yeah. it mm-hmm. that alludes to a better written yes. anime, whereas another looks... Ha ha, Chandelier fell and is... killed people, ha yeah. ha. An- another also is like 10 years older than the show. Spoilers for another <laughs> But, uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, oh, it's yeah. like... Oh yeah, you want to mention this came out in 2020 Yeah, this came out in well. 2020, and this is the plot we're working with. It was just, like, fucking... Like, we're not, we're not talking yeah. about, like, mid-2000s terrible edgy writing. Mm-hmm. We're talking about, like, terrible edgy writing in 2020, where it's like, this is, like, writing these themes this way in a story? Mm-hmm. Why? Like, this is, this isn't... 
just own up to like a product of its times like yeah. oh they're using like gay slurs and everything in it it's like it's a product of, it's still shitty but it's a product you could argue it's a product of its times like no this is shit where it's like if you're going to have someone write with this sort of subject material you need them to a understand what that subject material is and what it does to a person but also b you need to actually make sure they're writing it with reverence and respect to what that sort of subject material is Mm -hmm. and you're not writing stories where your uh your your characters who have these sympathetic horrifically traumatic events happen to them become villains sympathetic villains but also irredeemable psychopathic yeah serial killing villains yeah genocidal villains it's like what you're saying with this is shit that would be said in the 90s unironically and you're writing it in a story where the production value demands better quality yeah and it's like there are so many little stories that they don't they don't try too hard to be like this dark edgy like they're just like fun and those are like fun uh, those end up getting kind of out of hand, too. It, it, they just really went down like this. A big issue is every episode, they're like, we need to outdo the last one that was like this. And then it ends up just being like this trash. Um, and it, yeah, like it, it fell down the edgy for the sake of being edgy hole that I hate more than fucking anything. Like, it made me so mad. Um so yeah, I was like completely like, I think if I remember correctly, there was like one episode after this one that I liked. And then, so it was like, cause it was like 12 episodes, right? And I think there was one more that I was like, okay, that was a good episode. Um, and yeah, yeah it was just it's, like, man. I, it's like, I, on, honestly, the, the more I talk about this and the more I talk about like the episodes we watched, uh-huh. the more I realized I I didn't like this one bit. Yeah. Like, I, I it has potential and it's like, it could have been a decent, serialized anime, yeah. which is like, okay, that's cool. It's, it's like, random, random individual stories that are not connected or have very, very loose connections uh, where it's like, okay, it's just our main character going to this story and learning it. It's like, okay, that is interesting, that is fun, it's not going to stick with me, I'll forget about it, but while I'm watching it, and in in the week that I'm watching it, or whatever, it'll be interesting, and it'll be, it'll it'll make me feel good to be like, oh, it's interesting to think about this story and this story. But the stories they've told make me upset at it, because it's like, it's like uh, seeing a mansion on a on a on a on a street and being invited into that mansion for a party and you rock up in your in your formal sort of wear and you walk through the doors and on the other side is a is a two star motel mm-hmm. of the doors and it's like what the fuck is going on here yeah. like you promised you promised a mansion and now you're giving me poorly developed poorly maintained kind of garbage yeah like in 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 retros- like like the story up to a point is okay to decent to good but because of the specific elements they add in and because of the specific way they handle those elements it tanks the entire thing yeah and it's like what are you doing yeah i like and i took this when i watched it at a very episode by episode basis so it's like like i said i gave it a 6 because i really liked the first 3 episodes And then I was okay with the fourth one. And then it's like, throughout there were... I never... It never hit episode one again for me, which is a huge fucking issue, right? Um, Or episode three. It never never did that again once. I think episode one's the best episode in the series. Um, And then it's like, the rest, it was like, there were some where I was like, either, either this is just kind of boring and I don't really care, or like... Like, there were a couple that I was like, okay, that one was pretty good. Um, which is the only reason I gave it slightly above an average. And like I said, I thought the first three episodes at least did something interesting. But yeah, I don't know. The, there's just those few episodes and um, I didn't really think about it too much with four. But with nine, I specifically wanted to show you guys nine because nine was the episode where I was like, okay, <laughs> like 
that was the one where mm. I that was the one where I was like, there's absolutely nothing redeemable about this episode at all. Like one hundred percent. I hate this. Um Yeah. So 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 yeah. What do you think, do you? Six <laughs> Final thoughts. I I legitimately like I liked it somewhat. It'd be something I might watch, but then like the more we talked about it, the more I was just like, oh yeah. Yeah. It, 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 so it, it's it's kind of like for you, it's watchable, but you're not gonna like. It, it, it'll be something you put on as background noise. Yeah, I, it, I, it's not gonna be something that you're gonna. You're, it's not gonna be something that you're gonna put on and be like, oh, actually, hang on, I can't work while I'm watching this because I kind of want to pay attention because it's interesting. Oh yeah, it's no, like, I, I it's something to watch. Made it as I wrote it as a six for a reason. Yeah. Mm. Personally, I would say. Uh, two or a three the only thing propping it up from being a zero is the production value of it Mm -hmm. and the premise of a a really interesting premise of a a serialized magical anime where the main character is purely just your camera like that is such an interesting premise and there is so much you can do with it but they squander it and the things they do write with it are lazy, offensive, and fourteen and I'm deep. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just it it's just utter trash. Like you want you want like this is beautiful trash. Someone has gotten a trash can and put absolute garbage in it, but has made the trash can a forty carat gold trash mm-hmm. can. Mm-hmm. Like. It's beautiful, but it's still a trash can at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'd say probably a two, a two. just because like the sour taste of like not one but two episodes having the exact same yeah. sort of messaging when it comes to these sorts of traumatic events makes me think like how many other episodes have very similar ones too. Right? Yeah, and that's the thing. Actually, I th- I'm going to be real. I think these are kind of the only two that do. If I remember. Uh, no. I watched this recently, and I but I just kind of, like, skimmed it, because I had watched it, obviously, last year. So I just kind of, like, skimmed mm-hmm. through. But, uh, I think these are, I think I accidentally picked two, because I forgot episode four ended that way, 100%. Uh, because I just kind of skimmed and was like, oh yeah, that's this episode, and then forgot it ended that way. So I think I just accidentally showed you the two that were, like, that message. My, th- <laughs> so, my thing is, I'm kind of glad you yeah. did. Yeah. Because it's two examples of the exact same thing that drives home what my problem is with the writing yeah. to its core. Yeah. Is that it uses elements and, and, and symbolic sort of meanings and shorthands without properly addressing them and without yeah. properly giving them the sort of respect and thought that you need to have with these types of elements. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't don't watch this unless you're really curious to, to like what we're talking about, yeah. um, Man, and just know what you're getting. Should in have for. showed you guys the foot fetish episode. <laughs> Is that your favorite one? Uh, no, 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 don't come on, Spooky. You have to have been at no, some time. You have a foot fetish. No, I don't. I hate them. But anyway, mm, I'm pretty sh- no, I was no. going to say, I'm pretty sure you do just because <laughs> everything I've heard about you is about Shadow's Feet. Oh my god. But so. no, there's, there's like an episode where they're like, I, they're like making wine and they're like, I want a beautiful woman to step on these grapes. Mm. <laughs> it's so fucking weird. It's one of the weirdest episodes where I was like, okay. <laughs> That's like the extent of it. Right. I was just kind of like, this is, I'm watching this. This is a thing that exists. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, anyway. So, so yeah. The Wandering Witch, The Journey of Elena. Uh, the Journey Far uh, Away from This Anime. Goodbye. goodbye. We're goodbye. leaving. <laughs> Here we go. We're going what? away. We're goodbye. We're going away. Good- goodbye. Bye. 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 We're going away. Bye. Goodbye, anime. Goodbye, shitty anime. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody listening. Love you. Goodbye, shitty anime. I don't.